you were to look inside the wallet of the average British person, I tell you what you'd find. You would find a train ticket for a train journey from about a million years ago. You would find a picture of the Queen, as we are all supposed to carry at all times. And you know else, you'd probably find even smaller pictures of the Queen. But there's a brand called Charge that is trying to also challenge that in our wallet, we should perhaps be carrying some storage. This is the Charge Disk Plus, an external M.2 case for SSDs, arriving with USB 3.2 Gen 2 and two ports, one for power, one for data, this is probably one of the most portable external enclosures I've ever seen. Arriving with its own cable already pre-included, this whole thing fits inside my fairly average wallet here. And in this video, we're going to talk about whether it's good, whether it's bad, what we like, what we don't, and ultimately, is this finally the best M.2 enclosure I've ever seen. Let's go. Now this external enclosure from Charge, according to their own merchandising and marketing, is stated as the thinnest M.2 enclosure in the world. I will say it's a port of a 2280 link SSD in such a small casing is genuinely impressive here. The fact they've got the cable there as well for portability, I think is a nice touch too. Um, there are other enclosures in the market that get very, very close to the thinness of this, but I will say that a lot of those only support 2230 or 2242 length SSD. This is the full length one there. Uh, supporting up to a maximum 4TB of storage. I did try an 8TB drive that had a heatsink on board and it did recognize it on board. One of the biggest concerns when it comes to enclosures of this scale, when it comes to M.2, is heat dissipation. Now, part of that is going to be negotiated by the fact that this has got USB 3.2 Gen 2, which although fast at a gigabyte per second, has to be stated that that means the SSD is not going to reach the peak heat performance numbers that you would be concerned about in an enclosure of this scale. Also, it's completely metal all the way around and it does arrive with heat dissipation uh, pads to go inside to feed that heat off of the drive and its individual components, the controller and the NAND, directly onto the enclosure. I didn't notice it getting overly hot when in use, which kind of surprised me, but again, a big part of that was to do with that USB connectivity there. Now, alongside the USB connectivity, you may have noticed that second USB port there on the other side, and that is because this has an 85 watt power pass-through on board. It's not just designed to be a portable storage enclosure, because remember, you do still have to buy your own drive, but on top of that, it's designed to be attached, for example, onto your phone or portable MacBook or whatever, and not only attached to it, more on that in a second, but also, when you've only got one port there, it can still be used for data, but with power being delivered in as well, thereby a two-in-one here and allowing you to be able to charge your device and access that external storage on the go. Now, talking of on the go, it's worth highlighting there are other accessories available with this, but again, the key word there is other, more appropriately, optional. You will have to buy them. Um, with this device, which is about to, at the time of recording, hit crowdfunding there there are options for a magnetic panel that you can attach to the rear of your phone or on the rear of your uh, mobile device basically wherever you plan on attaching this that allow you to bolt it on very very easily it also arrives with two magnetic panels that are pretty darn strong personally i'm not going to attach this to my phone in the near future but i'm pretty sure i'm going to be utilizing this on most of my portable workstations that i take with me on the go and the idea of having not only that but very tight cables not unlike the kind of ethernet cables we get on unify setups with the way they approach cat cabling i quite like this tidy cable work the system arrives with that or a cable already a cable already pre-installed into the build of it and you don't really get much with it you get the drive you get an instruction and first time setup manual you get your screwdriver you get two thermal pads there and that's really your lot that's everything you get uh, on the plus side of things where we did our performance benchmarks on this drive we saw full saturation. We did tests with Atto. We did tests with AJA. We did a Windows transfer of 100 gigabytes. And in the case of the first two, we fully saturated that connection on those synthetic benchmarks, hitting 950, 980, 990 consistently. In the Windows transfer, we are talking 100 gig of data comprising 2,400 files, and it reached a peak of 680 megs and always lived within the four to 600 megabytes per second. And that was a non-synthetic or realistic transfer transfer test there. During that time we saw no 
um, oversaturation of the cache of the drive that I put inside, which is the WD green drive, um, and we saw no drop in performance. Uh, temperature numbers were fine. It definitely, definitely, definitely did a great job there of transferring that data consistently in that case without worrying about overheating and therefore the drive inside being throttled. And of course, as this is an enclosure only purchase, that does mean that it's up to you which drive you buy. And if you go for, say, a DRAMless drive or you go for a low capacity drive, then you're going to see slightly different reflected performance numbers. But I will say, with a Common Garden WD Green NVMe SSD, a Gen 3 drive, it really saturated those numbers. There's going to be some users that are going to complain that USB there, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 to be precise, at 10 gigabits per second, is a little limiting for an NVMe. Again, although there is some merit to that thought, I would highlight this is going to get overly warm if this was a Thunderbolt connection or a Gen 2 times 2 X2 connection or a USB 4, maybe down the line. But I think in terms of temperature use, that's going to be problematic. Now, in terms of the PCIe to USB controller, it is a Realtek RTL9210 running on a Gen 3 times 2 lane there. So you've got 2,000 megs of lane there for the transference of the data and only 1,000 there going out. Now, you can't connect two devices to the two USBs there. One is power, one will be data. But that still means that that controller, that PCIe bridge, is not going to lead to any kind of throttling when we see too often than not rather cheap PCIe controllers being used on a Gen 3 times one lane or two times two lane or two times four lane that end up throttling the overall performance out the USB. So it's nice to see that there. I will say I think the quality of the cable it arrives with is actually surprisingly good. Given it's not going to be taking up much space and it's clearly C to C here, there'll be some users who would have preferred an A to C. I will say straight away, very, very good design quality there. It's not massive but then this is designed to be utilized in that rather tight fashion and of course users don't have to use just this cable you can use any USB-C cable you've got knocking around which I'm sure you have still nonetheless I'm kind of surprised that it has gone for a C to C cable and not an A to C cable or even the option for both but I assume that is where our old friend space limitations would come back into the mix but there's a couple of things about this case uh, that did put me off let's be realistic number one and again, I appreciate the scale of it, but for that amount of data transferring through for a portable drive, and especially for a company like Charge that have a great history with regards to uh, power suppliers and external battery packs, I'm kind of surprised there isn't any PLP on this or power loss protection. For those that aren't aware, PLP would be a small transistor inside that in the event that when you're writing data, there is an interruption, a power failure, whatever, or just a simple USB disconnection that that the data being transferred over may have an inconsistency between being wrote to the buffer and onto the drive storage media. PLP allows just fractional milliseconds of power to continue to allow safe disconnection and safe check of data being transferred on and therefore not leading to a tiny inconsistency today that could be a problem later. And the lack of PLP on this did surprise me. Again, almost certainly a scale thing, but still I would have liked to have seen it. There isn't really any client software with it. There isn't any backup software with it. So if you were looking at this, hoping it was arriving with one touch backup or maybe encrypted backups there or password protected backups, you can do all that with your operating system or even your mobile. But I will say there is no client tools that rock out the gate with this drive which may disappoint some of you as a case it is very 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 well put together i was really really happy with the performance numbers in both the synthetic and non-synthetic test that we performed it's a very well put together drive i am going to continue using it and i do really like it but it's worth highlighting that with that scaling down there there's going to be compromises but again that's not the old, and they're not going for that enterprisey market. And maybe down the road, we'll see a fingerprint equipped version. Maybe we'll see ones with buttons there. But right now, as this approaches crowdfunding, I think for what they are marketing, it delivers on every one of those promises. You just need to know that you are going for an external casing here that is not going to be a kind of enterprise led. Hopefully, this will splinter off onto those. But other than that, the Charge Disk Plus, I like it. Maybe they'll bring out a pre-populated version, but I think the flexibility will appeal to some. If you do want to find out more about that crowdfunding, because I don't believe it's live yet at the time of recording, so I don't even know the pricing of it, there should be links in the description below. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.